Hi and welcome. This is Rob and Gab in the second series of Conversations with Dr. Rob Long. And we'll go to Rob for our first question. Great, thanks. Rob, we often talk to business leaders who say you can't manage if you can't measure. Uh, and often in the safety context, that measure is usually lagging indicators like LTIs. We'd love to hear your thoughts on how you would uh, talk to business leaders about that. Rob, it's a tricky question, and I do understand that industry leaders, uh, CEOs and executives of uh, very, very uh, significant companies struggle with the issue of measurement. And uh, they've got boards, they've got shareholders, and they've got people interested in how that company's performing, so they want to present a measure. The difficulty is that some of the measures we jump to have absolutely no correlation or relevance to culture at all. And so a lot of the time these large companies are measuring things which are uh, assumed or attributed to be connected to culture and they're not. So you end up with uh, large uh, multinational companies like BP, well known that they had documented for years uh, injury data, lost time injury data, a whole range of data to do with um, what we might call micro levels of safety, but they attended to nothing in their culture, which really ran underground for quite some period of time. So on the very day of the Horizon One well disaster, when 17 people were killed and many were injured, and one of the world's largest environmental catastrophes occurred, they were celebrating zero number of uh, data points to do with lost time injuries and so forth, medical treatment injuries. So there's a problem here. We're busily measuring things which are not cultural, yet cultural things determine the behaviours and the processes which we engage at an up higher level. So a lot of this stuff runs underground. Um, and so we can get false comfort from measuring, you know, oh, we're only at 2.1 this month. And then we get all excited when we go down to 1.9 the month after or whatever that is. What I'd say to that is that may bring you personal comfort. You may think that the measurement is helping you uh, in improve your safety or your risk management in your organisation. But that's a false sense of security. Unless you're really measuring as well, uh, other factors such as what is the level of cynicism and pessimism running across your organisation? What level of scepticism is running in subcultures in your organisation? How many people are running in tick and flick? How much hubris and overconfidence is running in your organisation? These are much better measures, and they're hard to measure too. These are much better measures to assess whether you're really performing uh, as you may want to do. So there's a conflict there. There's a, there's a, there's a tension between this urgency to measure and uh, what we think we should measure. So Rob, what you're actually saying is part of safety leadership is going beyond just all about measuring, having the guts to actually do more than just that. Yeah, look, I think, I think sometimes people are really enticed by simple, even simplistic solutions. They want fixes, and I, I understand that we want fixes. That's a really peculiar way to think about human beings. So much of the way we make our decisions, the way we make judgments, is actually not predictable. Um, it, it involves uh, really, I think if you really want to be involved in some form of leadership to work and try and influence other people, you have to work pretty hard on understanding what influences human judgment and decision making. So even just the beginning, starting to understand the idea of heuristics or the idea of cognitive biases is, is a good start. But if you were to do even more work as a leader and begin to understand the nature of messy, wicked problems of complexity, you might understand a little bit more about why some of the things organisations do go pear-shaped. So I think some leaders in managers and organisations have the best of intentions, they have wonderful intentions, and they will invoke or institute a new process or a new control thinking that they're managing people and their behaviours well. And then something goes pear-shaped and then out comes the blame and a whole range of different things. It's more complex than that. 
People are not machines. We need to start from that basis. They are not machines. You can't pull out some matrix and predict how another human being will behave or even in fact expect they will behave like you. Any person who drives on the road should know that you can't make those expectations. So the key to leadership is understanding the nature of humans, understand how we're different, understand how we're fallible, and then have different ways of maturing and understanding it, processing that, and then instituting that in the way we influence and the way we engage with other people. So Rob, thanks. That helps clear things up in my mind. Um, and what I take from that is safety or measuring safety can actually be a bit of a distraction. Um, so where do we go to from here? Don't get me wrong. There are some things and some helpful measures that we can use. I think the real distraction is that we think they're the only things. Mm. And yes, if I was in an organisation, I'd be interested in the injury data, except I'd probably be more interested in who the person was, how they were hurt, how we helped them in our organisation. I think sometimes we get stuck on 2.2s and 2.3s. Um, and the truth is, his name was John, or her name was Susie, and she has a family and two children, and she got hurt while she's working for us. I'd much prefer to hear stories like that. So, yes, I think sometimes we get fixated on uh, injury data, and we're not really consumed enough with the human side of safety or risk or even security. So. Hence, why would I have a company and call it Human Dimensions? Um, look, um, it's, it's, it's trying to get behind the injury data, trying to get behind lots of these things, which I think jump to the surface in organisations, and I think that's how they're a distraction. So what is the human story? Well, the human story is a journey. I don't care the, whether you're the leader, the manager, or the worker in an organisation, all of us are on this journey. We're all in some way growing up and maturing, learning to work together better, learning to manage each other better, working as a team better. Um, we only do that if we get more skilled at the simple things like conversations, how we engage another person, managing negativity, ensuring that we try to remain positive within our teams, being prepared to ask those critical, difficult questions and not being crucified for asking them. All those things that are tough. And when someone jumps up and down and says, look, this is not suiting me, having the capacity to listen. I think there's way too much telling and not enough open questions in the way we engage with other people, particularly in the way they see risk. So dominating and jumping over all people may seem appealing. It may seem wonderful to walk into a workplace, just tell everybody what to do. But somewhere along the line, we have to understand they're thinking human beings. They're learning as well. So the question is not so much, how can I change your behaviour and diminish your risk and mitigate your risk? It, it should be different questions about, as you engage in risk, how can I help you learn without having that hurt, without having that harm? Again, we're back to the question of balance, aren't we? So we've got to manage those excesses, realise we're on a journey, and that's a journey to maturity. And I think we've got a long way to go. Rob, that was great. Thank you. Really enjoyed that. We hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as we did. If you want to learn more about what we do at Human Dimensions, you can contact Gab or myself on the Human Dimensions website. We look forward to you joining us in the next series. Thanks.